Um, my name is Amanda Teo. I work for Missouri Immigrant and Refugee Advocates as an organizer and programs coordinator. I am joined here today with other advocates who have collaborated on a statement that condemns the corrupt practices of ICE carried out in devastating deportation operations. In order to keep our immigrant community safe, we are demanding in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act that ICE release all information regarding any immigration enforcement operations. Missouri has and always will be called home to thousands of immigrants. Today, over 200,000 immigrants reside in the state, coming from, but not limited to, Asia, Africa, Eastern Europe, and Latin America. Immigrants have shown to be important members of our community as workers and contributors to our local economy. In 2015, they had purchasing power of over $10 billion in our state. Businesses owned by immigrants had sales of over $5 billion and employed more than 34,000 people. Like the rest of our country, Missouri will be negatively affected as a state should we allow mass raids and the detention and deportation of undocumented immigrants. We will see a loss in over 13,000 jobs along with a $3 billion loss in economic activity. Furthermore, and of far greater importance, we will see a loss in our humanity. That's right. The immigrant community is not limited to their economic worth or educational achievements. The need to stand against deportation is rooted in liberation, which is connected in the idea that freedom for one is only possible with freedom for all. Amen. For those with DACA, please remember to use self-care, but remain vigilant in your need to be a free agent of a well-oiled machine that is ICE. Remember to apply for your DACA renewal by October 5, 2017, should it expire between now and March 5, 2018. Next Friday, September 22nd, Mira, along with community partners, will offer emergency DACA renewal clinics free of charge, along with funds to help with the financial burden of renewing. To all members of the immigrant community, the best way to resist in this moment is to be prepared. Educate yourselves on your rights, seek legal counsel, it may be possible to adjust your status, attend power of attorney workshops. My name is Reverend Rebecca Turner and I'm the pastor of Christ Church United Church of Christ in Maplewood, Missouri. And I stand here today alongside immigrants as an ally there's allies are needed and there are so many things that allies can be doing to stand with our immigrant neighbors first and foremost we must let those who are directly impacted be the ones to lead us we must hear and believe their stories only they can say what they are experiencing and what they need from us we can be present as a benevolent witness to what is happening in their lives, in their communities, in their neighborhoods, and to be present and then to speak and repeat what we have seen and heard. We can get involved with local groups like those that are here today, IFCLA and MIRA, those groups that are immigrant-led or standing with immigrants. We need to get religious leaders involved. We need to get congregations involved. All of us can contact our elected leaders at every level to demand that the raids and the deportations stop. And last but certainly not least, we need to give our money to the groups doing the work. Money is desperately needed to provide legal aid to educate the public, to support those needing sanctuary, and to coordinate congregational and neighborhood responses. I invite us all to turn in prayer. We turn to the great spirit of love that connects us all. Let love become law in our land. We pray for those who are terrified of a knock at the door. Let love become law in our land. We pray for those who have been separated from their families. Let love become law in our land. We pray for those who are judged by their skin color. Let love become law in our land. We pray for those in power to be fair and compassionate. Let love become law in our land. We pray for raids and deportations to cease. Let love become law in our land. 
we pray for every signer of this request that we present today and give thanks for their willingness to take a stand. Let love become law in our land. We pray, we bless those who carry this request inside. Let love become law in our land. We pray for this piece of paper that it burn justice and compassion into the hearts and souls of government employees. Let, Let love, love become law in our land. land. We pray for a Operation Mega to end before it has begun. Let, Let love, love become, become law in our, in our land. land. My name is Faison Sayed. I'm the executive director for the Council on American Islamic Relations, a chapter of the largest civil rights and advocacy organization for Muslims in America. Right now, we live in a nation today that has forgotten its identity, a nation today that is rebelling against its very foundation, that all Americans are immigrants, all Americans are from parts of the world, and they have come together in order to build this nation, and it's the diversity of that population that makes America great. Right now, we have elected officials who are going against that principal foundation, and by targeting those young men and women who are recipients of DACA by making walls in this country, by saying that the problem is not the corruption that exists within corporations or other issues, but it's these families who come and make better life for themselves is heinous, is wrong, and against it. Today, this congregation of diverse voices and people have come to this building in order to give ICE a letter to let them know that their strategy of targeting 10,000 people in this country who are happen to be undocumented is immoral and goes against the very fabric that this nation is built upon. We are here unapologetically to let them know that their strategy of claiming that they are keeping America safe that they claim that they're here to keep America safe tears family apart and by doing so makes all of us unsafer and we reject that premise and we reject it wholeheartedly the best way to keep America safe is to keep families together to allow people to build this country to work pursue their education because that is what our nation is founded upon in a little bit this group is going to go inside and give that letter to ICE and they will be joined by dozens of groups across the country that will be taking similar actions because once all of our voices are heard together that is when we become powerful and that a change only awaits those people who take action on that change that every droplet of rain makes the ocean rise and every small action that we do will have that positive impact to change the conditions and keep families together and we pray for a country that remembers its heritage remembers its identity and honors its legacy thank you good morning my name is randy fleischer i'm a rabbi at central reform congregation in the center west end a few weeks ago i stood with 75 other rabbis from all over the country at an ICE detention facility in Northern California, protested the arrest and possible deportation of Hugo Mejia. The case of Mr. Mejia, an upstanding community member, construction worker, husband and father of three children, who was arrested at work for not having a social security card, has been vigorously taken up by the local Jewish community. Synagogues have befriended and collected resources for Hugo's family, and significant numbers of Jews have become involved in supporting his defense and attending a weekly interfaith vigil to show support for him. And Hugo is just one story of many where Jewish communities of faith have become engaged. Why is the increasing government hostility towards immigrants apparently about to be heightened by new raids, new detentions, and God forbid new deportations be met with so much resistance from Jews? The answer is part biblical and part personal. The biblical part for us comes from the 36 times that the Torah instructs us on the treatment of strangers, strangers who were basically immigrants. The text teaches us that we are supposed to welcome immigrants, include them and treat them with kindness, equity and love. The personal part begins with the reason for those biblical values. We are to welcome immigrants because we know what it must feel like to be rounded up detained and enslaved because of the well-known story of our ancestors and their fate in ancient Egypt. 
And in more recent Jewish history, even here in the United States, words like illegal alien, criminal, raid, detain, and deport have been used against us. And believe me, if you listen to the white supremacists, these are words that are still being used to do the opposite of what the Bible says. Words meant to exclude us and exclude so many others of our friends and family and allies. As a Jew and a rabbi, I join with people of faith and values to say that because of our belief in justice and compassion, because of our history and our stories, it is obvious, it is obvious whose side we are supposed to be on. We're supposed to be on the side of the vulnerable, the stranger, the side of immigrants. I know as well that we need to be opposed to the side that terrorizes, divides, stereotypes, bullies, and tears apart loving, hardworking American families. That is why I am here to denounce the direction of our immigration policies. I know which side I'm supposed to be on. It is so clear that from a moral standpoint that we have to do everything we can to welcome immigrants, yet right now as a society, we are doing anything but that. Shame on us for that and let us not rest until Hugo Mejia and all immigrants can live without fear and that the enforcement we talk about most is enforcing the welcoming spirit that our deepest values demand.